Okay, so one of the reasons why these videos are taking me so long is because I was trying to figure out what is a good way to explain all this stuff for a female reproductive system, what to do first, what to do second, and I think there's no real good way of doing it. So I'm just going to go over all the hormonal control in like this one video and then chunk it out into like just like follicle development and then go over it one more time on a graph as well. So there's like three different ways that you could watch this potentially. Okay. All right. So the hormonal control for women is more complicated than for men because you're tracking four hormones and that has to be tracked over a 28 day cycle. And not only that, you're going to have hormones that are going to affect two different parts of the female reproductive system. One, you're going to see the ovarian cycle here. The ovarian cycle is what's happening to our follicle and what's happening to our oocyte. Okay. Then we have the uterine or the menstrual cycle. Basically, this is what's happening to the uterus. These things happen simultaneously. This is why there are days on this timeline. So like day one, what's happening in your ovary, what's happening in your uterus, okay? Or in a woman's ovary in a woman's uterus, if it's not you personally. So let's track what's gonna happen and like just kind of go through what's happening at each stage. So we're gonna start at day one, okay? So for day one, this is the first day of menstruation. Menstruation meaning the first day of a woman's period. At day one of menstruation, what you're going to see is things like progesterone and estrogen are dropped. So again, we're going to have over here. Okay, so I'm just going to start over here. We're going to see that we have something called the corpus albicans being created. We're going to see a decrease in progesterone and a decrease in estrogen. Okay, that's like where I'm going to end and where I'm going to start at the same time. And I'm going to use abbreviations to make sure my video is not like, I don't know, 30 minutes long or something. So at day one, here we're going to see, again, I'm just going to put a drop in progesterone, a drop, a drop in estrogen. Okay. Because progesterone and estrogen drop, what we're going to see is that results in the hypothalamus, which is going to secrete GnRH. GnRH is going to target, remember GnRH is gonadotropin-releasing hormone. It targets the anterior pituitary gland to release gonadotropins. There are two of them. One is FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone, and the other one is LH, or luteinizing hormone. So you have to follow these two hormones separately. FSH and LH only target the ovary, okay? They're only targeting the ovary, so they only target the ovarian cycle. When you release FSH, what you're going to see is that FSH is going to help us pull a primordial follicle or a group of primordial follicles. Okay, those primordial follicles are going to start to develop into primary and then secondary And then finally, uh, we'll say, yeah, that's our secondary. And then finally, a graphian. Whoops, I forgot. Graphian has like two A's. <sighs> like half of this is just me erasing sometimes. Graphian. <laughs> or a graph to a graphene follicle. So you want to see that FSH, what FSH does is it targets the actual development of the follicles that are going around the oocyte, okay? At this time, the oocyte's going to continue to go through meiosis. So you're going to finish meiosis one, and you're going to start meiosis two, and you're going to stop meiosis two. So here you have like a primary oocyte. Okay, and then about, and here you should have a secondary oocyte. Okay, that's what FSH is gonna do. It makes the follicle go around thicker. What LH is gonna do, 
So FSH targets all these things. What LH does is LH is also going to target the follicle cells. Okay. What that causes is the follicle cells to release estrogen. And estrogen is going to feed back in two ways. One way is a negative feedback system. That's the first thing. Okay, so just imagine, let's let's do this real, like for real, so you guys understand. When we have our primary and our secondary oocytes and we're at, and LH is causing the release of estrogen here. We'll make estrogen uh, nine green, like in this, I don't know. Per let's do purple, okay. Estrogen. Estrogen is going to first feed back like this negatively, and it turns off GnRH. It also will turn off FSH and LH. Why? The primary and the secondary follicles are starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger but I wanna make sure I only have one graphene follicle. So I'm gonna turn off FSH and LH until I get my graphene follicle, basically. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. I'm gonna turn off FSH and LH so that only the follicle that is most mature continues to go through development. So what ends up happening here is that the graphene follicle starts to release its own estrogen without LH. And as a result of that, it's gonna create a positive feedback mechanism, which I'll make in purple also, but just a, like a thicker line potentially. So as soon as the graphene follicle is the one that is selected, basically because there's no other follicles that are selected, it's gonna create a positive feedback loop. So you want to think about the negative feedback loop comes first so that we only make sure that one follicle develops into a graphene follicle. As the graphene follicle increases estrogen, so here if we have an increase in estrogen from the dominant or graphene follicle, What ends up happening is it turns on GnRH, FSH, and LH at higher levels. You'll see a spike, okay? That's going to cause more LH to be released. So those really big peaks in LH, so right here, you're going to have a peak in LH, which is going to result in ovulation, okay? The LH is also going to target those follicles and create the corpus luteum. So it's like, you know, day 14 is ovulation. LH should essentially spike. So estrogens are going to spike first. LH is going to spike next, and you're going to have ovulation occurring. So what's happening in the uterine cycle at this time is FSH and LH are not doing anything to the uterus. But as soon as you start to increase your estrogen levels here, estrogen is actually going to target the endometrial lining and you're gonna start to thicken that lining just a little bit, okay? This is called the proliferative phase. So you're going to have the endometrial layer start, start to thicken a little bit more. So you're still gonna have thickening a little bit more, okay? At the rupture of the oocyte, of the secondary oocyte, what is going to end up happening is all of these levels are going to start to dip. Estrogen is going to start to dip. FSH is going to start to dip. LH is going to start to dip. The corpus luteum, though, is really going to make sure everything turns off again. So the corpus luteum gets created, and what ends up happening is the corpus luteum is no longer going to target the ovary with its hormones, instead it's gonna target the endometrial lining, okay? So what we see is the corpus luteum makes progesterone and estrogen at higher quantities. That causes the secretory phase or the thickening of the endometrial lining even more for two more weeks. We wanna give the endometrial lining two weeks to thicken so that we can have implantation of the, uh, of 
of the embryo if the embryo is created because of fertilization, essentially. Okay. The other thing that's going to happen is progesterone and estrogen are also going to have a negative feedback. So as soon as progesterone and estrogen go higher, so here we're going to see an increase in progesterone and an increase in estrogen. And what those two things do is they're going to help turn off this positive feedback mechanism that was going on. It's going to turn off FSH. It's going to turn off LH. The reason is you don't want to create any more follicles. You just want the endometrial lining to thicken so that you can have implantation of your embryo if sperm and egg came together, okay? So there's two options, two options. For this, you know, 12, I'm sorry, that for this two week period, so from ovulation to day one again, you can have two things happen. Number one, no fertilization. Okay, I didn't mean to make that red, but I did. If you have no fertilization, you make the corpus albicans. You decrease progesterone and estrogen. You start menstruation. And you start the whole cycle over again, right? I turned off that negative feedback loop, so I turned back on GnRH and FSH. So I start all over again, creating a new follicle, okay? Number two is fertilization. If fertilization happens, I have to make sure I have an increase in progesterone and estrogen. I need to make sure my endometrial lining remains thick. I should change this. Okay, I want to keep progesterone and estrogen. All right. So for the first three months of pregnancy, this is done basically by the embryo. The embryo is going to create human chorionic gonadotropin. So we're going to create human gonadotropin, human chorionic gonadotropin, which is a hormone. And human chorionic gonadotropin targets here, targets the corpus luteum. I'm just going to abbreviate the corpus luteum basically it is going to keep progesterone and estrogen high for three months. After those three months, the placenta is going to make progesterone and estrogen at higher and higher values until birth occurs. Okay. So that's like all the hormones. I know it's like really complicated and it's like super confusing. So I'm going to go over the, the follicle part one more time. And then what you really want to understand about the, um, the uterus is that you need estrogen to help you start to increase. And then progesterone and estrogen has to be very high to keep the endometrial lining. If you think about this, so some women will have a miscarriage and they start their period essentially what ends up happening is your progesterone and estrogen levels were not high enough to maintain the endometrial layer sometimes, okay? That means that the embryo wasn't developing properly potentially and wasn't making part of the chorion. It wasn't, it wasn't making the placenta correctly, okay? 